Thank you for the introduction. Uh, where, what was it introduction? Sorry. Uh, for the talk before, because it was really a great introduction for my talk, I want to build on top of that. Um, so I'm uh, Frika Mufke. I'm the maintainer of the Android SDK of Blockstack. And I want to talk a bit how you can use decentralized identity in a way um, that, well, I'm really excited about. Um, it's kind of new technology, decentralized and everything. Society might not be ready, and if there's blockchain involved, this is not financial advice. So just disclaimer. Um, I'm an Android developer uh, for many years, and a concept that really excites me is the Android content providers. The idea is that many apps can access the same data. This happens on Android device uh, through this type uh, component is content provider, and it's backed by files or also maybe by the cloud. But the, really the interesting idea is that your contacts, your images, your calendar uh, sits at one place and many applications can make use of them. You do not have to type them again and again and again. And now the question is, how can we get this to the web? Um, and this is possible because we have now identities that are decentralized uh, identities that you can use to make, to, uh, well, to associate your data with. Um, so we heard decentralized identity. We have a W3 working group. Um, it is self-sovereign. Other people can verify it. We had a demo really here five minutes ago. Great. Um, so it's really about cryptographic keys. Once we have a cryptographic key, then we can make work uh, with the with the data, and um, there we have this authenticator that owns the private key that manages your private keys, and application can ask this authenticator to uh, give you some information, um, some um, piece that you can prove to uh, that you are the owner of the key. Um, so I, I skipped this, we had the introduction, how this DID looks like. So you do not have to have a password anymore. You have 45 different ways how you can create your decentralized identity. And Blockstack is one of them. We saw Ethereum version um, in the talk before. So the idea is when you log in, when you authenticate to your device, um, you are creating with your cryptographic keys some kind of a, a proof that you own this key. And um, yeah, so for Ethereum, there's, for example, three boxes as well. Uh, they really have a nice uh, concept where you associate or where your identity is re represented with a profile. And uh, this is the Ethereum address. And you get some information about the user. And uh, Blockstack using a um, more human readable uh, way to represent your identity. But it's really about that you uh, can have a proof that you own this private key in the end. And the app wants to have this proof so that they can act, in, um, act on behalf of the user interact with other users, exchange encrypted messages, uh, talk to other services or other users. So once we have this proof, uh, we might want to store our data at a place uh, that, where they know I'm the owner of this data. And that's where we come back to the Android content provider. So we want to have a concept where uh, the user can access or give applications authority to access these data. And decentralized uh, storage, there are different possibilities. Uh, the idea is that we don't want to have these honeypots anymore. We had a talk yesterday, Web3, uh, why this is really bad. And uh, there are different possibilities. But the applications, in the end, they don't want to um, don't want to manage all the data of all users. But the idea is that uh, the user is managing their own data. So we want to get, get away from the state where we now that uh, applications, databases, manage all the users several times for different application, ABCD, uh, Facebook, Google, and so on. 
um, we want to move to a place where one user can manage their own data. So for the content provider, what does it mean on the device? So we have the authenticator, and the user can now give proof to the uh, application that they can act on behalf of the user and access, for example, the images. So there's one particular key that allows you to access your images somewhere in the cloud, probably. There's a concept of identity hub, but that's uh, standard notation details. I just want to make sure that the idea is clear. You can give another key only to one application, and then this application is allowed to access your contact data. And uh, so this are, these are web applications, so they are served from the web, but they're sitting on your device and they're working locally. And um, so, the, uh, yeah, it's, it's about, oh, let's see. We have the two examples to compare a bit. The authenticator, block stack, uh, you have a web app where you authenticate yourself, so they manage your keys in a web app running on your device. Um, Threebox has the Web3 authenticators, so there you have different browser extensions also on to manage your private keys. And then for the storage, there you have in Threebox um, OrbitDB that is based on IPFS, and you have it's key value based. And in Blockstack, you have Gaia protocol that is based on um, existing cloud storage, so really fast and performance and cheap. It's file based. And um, what is kind of missing for them that you have the uh, data schema. And I'm gone. Thank you. <laughs>